Hey, we're checking in here with team number 1339, Angel Botics, coming in out of Colorado. And we have Julia and Nick here on the Open Alliance Show to talk more about uh, their team's progress, what they're working on, and what they want to show off to the first community as well, too. So, uh, Julia and Nick, do you mind introducing yourselves? Yeah, so I'm Julia. I am the team captain of 1339. And uh, I'm Nick. I'm the strategy and design lead. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Discover why Kettering University is the number one choice for many first students and schedule your tour at Kettering.edu. And by Stryker Careers. Help create the next medical breakthrough in a fantastic internship or career when you visit careers.stryker.com. So we have up here on screen, welcome, by the way, uh, some CAD, which we'll be getting into in just a little bit. But Julia, you want to start us off with uh, kind of some things happening behind the scenes with your team a little bit. I know we'll be talking about some uh, T-shirt printing and then moving over to a different facility. What do you want to start us out with? Um, yeah, so our imagery is probably one of the most important parts. So here we're printing our own T-shirts. We have these sort of pieces of vinyl that we lay out and then we heat press them onto the T-shirts. So... For um, 1339, imagery is quite a big part. So we really, this this year's theme is Jazzercise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so here we have the t-shirts and then we just peel off this plastic. Oh, this is not going well, but. We, we won't judge you too hard on being on the air t-shirt t printing. Look like. Yeah, um, obviously you would peel the clear plastic off, but that's what the t-shirts look like. And. So this is just sort of a little behind the scenes. We have all yeah. our vinyl printed out and then we just heat presses it all on. We well, also have a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes that we won't show just yet, but. What, what are kind of, of some of the previous process. themes that your team has done? Um, in the previous years, I think we had like an 80s theme of like video games. Um, I know one year we did like Greek people. I think we did. Oh, the Dr. Seuss theme was also quite. A fun year where we had like fuzzy bumpers nice so, yeah very cool so um so you mentioned there were a couple other things maybe not the quite show off right now was there anything else uh, in this room you want to show before we head over to the other one um i think that's all for this room Perfect. Well, we'll let so. Julia, I know uh, we're going to do some magic here of uh, let you transition over to the other and show up. But in the meantime, uh, Nick, uh, we have your cat up on here. So why don't you talk to us about uh, a little bit of some of the concept and design and how far you come. This is some incredible progress uh, your team has here so far. All right. Yeah. So uh, this is where our CAD model's at right now. Um, one thing we realized right away this year is uh, some of the similarities uh, between this game and 2020. Uh, so a lot of our mechanisms, we just adapted to fit in with the bigger game piece. Uh, and we also discovered that the game pieces interacted with all sorts of intake rollers. They're not super picky like the 2020 balls were. Uh, so we sort of went for a design that was similar to our 2020. So we have an over bumper intake here. Uh, and that's operating on a four bar linkage. Uh, so this can extend in and out of the robot. Uh, and that's great in case we bump into walls or things of that nature uh, or other robots. And uh, from there, we sort of index with these uh, belts that bring the ball to the center of the robot, bring it back, uh, and then roll it up into the shooter column. Uh, the shooter's the thing we sort of done the least work on, uh, but we're hopefully going to get some progress on that soon. Um, so yeah, uh, we also went for a, uh, upper level climb with this robot. Uh, so we have a system where we use one set of static hooks and one set of hooks that are, uh, able to rotate around this pivot right here and also extend. Uh, so I sort of have something set up here that, oops, shows what that might look like. I think the wheel MK cat is sort of not cooperating right now. Uh, but we would grab on to the bottom bar like this, extend up to the top, and then sort of pass it off between the hooks to climb. Sweet. I'm, I am amazed at the amount of uh, work that you've done, uh, you know, only being in week two uh, um, on this robot design. Like, this is this is incredible. Thank you. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, um, from a general concept-wise, like from a priority uh what makes you when you're looking at like the you know the, the, the 
the cost breakdown of uh, going for a higher level climb uh, and doing all the other things you are, how did you come up with that priority process that you're looking at doing? Uh, so yeah, uh, at our strategy meeting, I think we actually initially planned on doing mid rung only, but after that, uh, we sort of started thinking that, uh, having an upper level climb would be something that really set us apart from the other low cycling robots that are going to be, uh, on the field this season. Uh, and so having a big competitive edge over them might, uh, enable us to get picked sooner. Obviously a robot that can climb high is going to be more attractive than one than, uh, than one that can't, uh, and it also, I think this year, it, it's like three cycles, almost four cycles uh, for a full climb. Yeah. Uh, that's the equivalent number of points. So we thought that that would be really impactful for us. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, right now, we're going to be prioritizing the low goal. Uh, and that's just because we think uh, we're going to be able to get almost as many, if not as many points as the high goal, just because of the lower cycle times. When you're looking at it from a, a time perspective of climbing on the rung, uh, what like what is your you know you mentioned it's worth like four cycles, so theoretically you'd want to be able to do it in quicker than what you could uh, four cycles, right? So what what's kind of your goal in order to get up to either the higher traversal rung? Uh, we haven't done too much testing, but I think around maybe like twenty seconds uh, from mid to high rung is a, around a reasonable estimate for what we'd be able to do. Uh, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good, uh, cycle there. So, yeah. So let's talk about, um, so I have a question on your shooter. You say you haven't worked that much on your, on your shooter specifically. Um, you know, because you can only hold two balls, what was the, what, what are you thinking about, um, having so much, uh, pathway inside of your robot? What led to that decision? Uh, yeah. So, uh, one of the things we decided pretty, pretty early on is that we wanted to have the shooter and intake on opposite sides, uh, just so we could intake back up and ram right into the lower hub and dump straight into it. Um, and so it's partially a matter of, you know, wanting uh, just this to be on the backside of the robot and the intake to be on the front. Another thing that played into that was the center of gravity. So initially we actually did have this whole shooter uh, much closer to the front, uh, but that didn't play uh, very nicely with our climber. We wanted our center of gravity to be in a really manageable location uh, for mounting that. And, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, I mean, it's all, all good thinking. I mean, I'd say that one of the things I think a lot of teams would, that are going for the traversal bar are going to have to deal with is center of gravity, which is, you know, it's great that you're using, uh, looks like on shape, um, because that's going to give you a lot more information if everything's dimension, but, you know, center of gravity is something you're gonna have to really pay attention to. Um, it looks like Julia might be standing by a drivetrain. <laughs> she is. <laughs> Why don't we check in with her? Julie, are you, are you there with us? Can you tell us a little bit more uh, about what we're seeing on screen for you? We are working on our autonomous for our robot. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Diego and let him sort of talk about that a little bit more. Hi, um, my name is Diego. I'm the lead programmer. So what we're trying to do right now is characterize the robot. So we're testing to see how many volts the motors need to overcome static friction. And we, we take those values and put them in our autonomous program so the robot can start driving as soon as possible instead of waiting to get up to speed. What are you guys coding in and what, uh, how are you implementing your autonomous itself? Yeah, so we code in Java using some WPI lib tools. So, and then for uh, autonomous, we use command-based programming. So instead of sequentially telling the robot what to do, we can give uh, different commands as outlines. And then depending on what our robot sees and different inputs that it gathers, it can make decisions and use those commands that uh, we've given it. Well, how about from like a sensor standpoint, from a, a dry perspective, are you using, is it complete dead reckoning or are you putting some sensors on to get some feedback? Yeah, so for now, we're thinking dead reckoning using odometry from the wheels sure. and uh, IMU. But um, I think in the future, we might use a camera to see where the balls are, but that's kind of up in the air, uh, depending on how far we get this season. Greg, let me ask you uh, on this. When you're looking at, at teams like uh, from different types of autonomous, is there anything that you uh, have advice for teams to give as like they're looking to go into kind of deeper into the autonomous rung from like going into vision for it versus encoder sort of thing? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's a there's always a a balancing act of you know having enough sensors and enough information about where you are on the field and not having enough, right? So obviously things like encoders are great because they can give you relative to position. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you have computer vision, which allows you to not really worry about where you are on the field um, because you can get a lot of aiming. But I think there is, there's always a balancing act between having too much of too many different things um, and then how you layer all those um, doing it. So really the sensor fusion between a lot of different systems, you need to have, be thinking about that from a very, very, like very beginning of your robot process about what you're trying to do. And my recommendation is always to try to figure out exactly what you're trying to do and do it as simple as you could possibly get away with doing it, right? Like it's, and so I think that that's, you know, but honestly, in, in, here at the beginning of week two, being able to have a robot driving around that you're already characterizing, I think that's the biggest step is get started on your autonomous as early as you can, because you're going to learn a lot. Absolutely. Um, love to bring uh, Julie. I'm not sure if there's anything else that we wanted to show off on there. I know at some point we were looking at going outside. Uh, is there anything else that's in there that that uh, 1339 would like to show off in particular? Currently, our CNC is broken, so we are cutting everything out on our laser printer. So that's it's kind of loud, but here's our laser printer. So when you're cutting, uh, looking at cut out, like what, what type of material are you using on the laser printer? Because obviously sometimes you can only do so thick a material. Um, I think right now we're using, how, how thick is the material? How thick is the material? I think it's quarter inch plywood. Yeah, so yeah, th this like, is wood though, right? Like plywood you're using, okay. Yeah, this is plywood. And what, what is being cut out right now? Can you describe a little bit more of what this piece is? I think this right now is our, um, we're the shooter. I know Nick might know a little bit more. Yeah, that's a, uh, so we're going to cut out two of those plates that you see right now uh, and just offset them with standoffs in the center, uh, connect a motor, probably just a brushed motor with a uh, directly to 12 volts. Uh, and so we're going to test out dual flywheels. So one on the hood, uh, one in the center, sort of like we saw with a lot of uh, teams in 2020. Um, so that's one of the prototypes we're making. And then we're also working on a uh, an intake prototype, which is basically just directly copying the geometry we have in CAD right now uh, and just connecting that to the practice robot they were testing autonomous on. Uh, and at some point, I think we also plan on doing like a, uh, a vertical uh, indexing uh, prototype. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I love laser cutters. I think actually, you know, a lot of teams really start talking about, uh, you know, should they get their CNC router? Or should they get, you know, what tool should they buy? Uh, laser cutter is probably uh, unmatched in terms of, you know, the speed and the ability to prototype, um, you know, so pairing up a laser cutter with a CNC router, for example, so you can cut wood, cut plastic, do things really fast and know that it's perfect before you move it to uh, metal. Uh, I think it makes this a really amazing prototyping tool. So, yeah. So, Julia, anything else uh, to wrap up for uh, the Angelbotics uh, shop that you want to show us, sir? Um, nope, that's about it for the shop. So, what are of our store. yeah? So, what are <laughs> what are next steps for Angelbotics? Looking to your uh, comp building competition season as you uh, are approaching week two and getting in the middle of that. Uh, what are kind of the next steps uh, overall as a team from either robot or non-robot side of things that you want to accomplish? Um, so kind of our next steps. Obviously, we're working on our prototyping. We're just going to try and get all of that and figure out what's working, and then we're going to start building our um, building our robot. And then we sort of have a lot of things going on at once, as you can tell. Yeah. So we have our programmers working on like a drive base that we built in the off season. And then we're, once we have all of the CAD drawings and the prototyping finished, then we're going to have our mechanical team building our robot for the season. And then once both of those sections are done, then the programmers are going to start working on our actual robot for the year. 
Well, we look forward to seeing that. Uh, Angel Box will be checking in with you in just a few weeks here. I'm sure progress uh, will be had during that time. We'll get to see uh, some uh, some assemblies happen uh, during that. So as we get into week two, we wish you best of luck with that. Uh, of course, if you're interested in seeing more about Angel Botics and the Open Alliance, you can find out more in the link uh, in the description below. And we can't wait to see more of what happens. Thanks a lot for taking the time, Angel Botics. Nice to speak with you. Yep, thank you yeah, for having us. Thanks for having us. us. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.